So it, early on in your career, you were known as the guy that was kind of a headhunter, and it was more not executing. How did you get to the point where you were able to execute? Well, I, I, as I was maturing, remember, I came up as a reliever. In my first year, it took me a while to adjust to what I had. Mm -hmm. When I was a reliever, it was rear back and let it go. When, when I came up to the big leagues and, and, and Felipe handed the ball to me to become a starter, it was different. I thought I was relieving, so I was holding two seamers and letting go, 98, 97, with a big tail on, on a two-seam fastball. So, so most show of the people time, at home a two-seamer, what it's going to do, what's the action look like? Coming well, a two-seam is, is hold pretty much like that, but since you keep the longer finger on top of that seam, the, it's going to pull the ball a little longer. So by the time you release the ball, you're pulling it this way, and that seam will, will, will bring the ball over to move to the inner part of a right-handed hitter and, so and away from the like left. This. Yeah, it's going to be tailing away. And normally oh. for guys like me, who are three-quarter, uh, I had a tail even on the four-seam fastball. So what I, what I was able to do was simplify my bullpen sessions. Okay, well, let's show us. And, and, you want to show us? Yeah, okay, of course. Okay, keep telling them at home what you're talking about. So you simplified your bullpen sessions, meaning what? Uh, the, the first thing you have to realize are the things that, that, that you really need to work on. At that point, for me, it was locating the fastball in the inner part of the, uh, of the plate because uh, I, I was a power pitcher. So I threw 97, 98, and I was relying on movement to try to get it in and also velocity. Well, Felipe told me, why don't you simplify what you want to do and, and execute your idea? The idea Felipe told me was, why don't you use cross-seam fastball that will get there and will get by anybody if you elevate it enough? So a cross-seam fastball, just like you did with the uh, two-seamer, show them at home what that's supposed to look like coming out of your hand. Well, the, 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 uh, see, uh, we call it cross-seam fastball because you, you come across three of the seams of the ball if you have a hand pretty much on average like mine. This is a cross-seam fastball, and, it, and it's called a straight fastball. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was never straight. I always had a little tail on it. <laughs> but, but this is what the ball does, and, and it, it allows you to hold the ball a little bit better. If you hold a two-seam, it's a lot easier to, to, to slip off your fingers. When you hold the, the cross-seam fastball, it, it allows you to hold on the bottom and hold on the top. Now, as you release the ball, you hit the ball at the end, with the tip of your fingers. You get this rotation. Y yes. So simplifying it, so you eliminated the two-seamer, went with the four-seamer. Yes, this I went to the four-seamer, okay. and this is what I did. I made sure that if I was going to miss, and this is when I talk about premature pitchers in the big leagues, this is what I did. I made sure that I executed my idea, like Felipe told me. If it's in, well, I'm going to go to the inner part of the plate. Even if I miss, on, uh, to this side, I'm executing my idea. Now, if it's away, I'm, I'm just going to make sure first that I'm hitting away. If I don't hit away, I'm failing. I'm not executing my idea. So what I did was go away from the plate. It doesn't matter how far, but you are executing what you meant to do. You're executing your own ideas. Now, uh, throwing the ball over the plate wasn't really difficult. You just have to let the guy hit if you want to hit. But when you're asked to throw the ball to this side. Okay. See, there. Uh, I'm supposed to throw the ball right here, and I miss this way. That ball's hit. That ball's hit. And if you miss badly, like premature pitchers are doing, you're going to end up on this side. And th th there's nothing more uncomfortable to a catcher when, when you're asked to throw away and the pitch is in. Have you seen the reaction on the catchers? See that? They hate that. Yeah. You, you become a, a very uncomfortable guy to catch. That's why some, some other guys that are called effectively wild normally throw no hitters, and yeah. they, they do a lot of stuff like that. It's because when they're asked to throw away, they miss on this side with movement, and you don't know. Guys like me, who actually executed, sometimes gave an advantage to the hitters because they knew I was going to hit away when I wanted to.